Okay, now that we're aware that 4 BC is 1 BC, so you don't have to go chasing eclipses, now we're going to show more about how these two time tracks interact based on the millennium and other deadlines that are related. The idea is that Christ has to be born and die in time so that this 54 year credit can be reimbursed to the Gentiles. But there's a problem that ends up occurring as a result of David's death versus the f time track here about temple. So we're going to see another interplay of deadlines that impact when the Lord is born and dies. Okay? So again, the big thing that you got to remember about Bible time tracks is you you can't just add up numbers you see in the Bible and get anywhere. You have to ask the question, well, wait a minute, what's the accounting basis for this particular event, this particular thing? Which time track does it fit in? Okay, and that's what nobody's done because they didn't know that God had deadline rules for time. They should have known because Daniel 9 is a deadline. But they didn't. So now that you know, the objective is to figure out, okay, which event is in which color time track? And then how do those time tracks interrelate? So that you don't end up, so that you can pick the right deadline. Because see here, Noah, Noah got his 490 in 1556 from Adam, which produced a deadline that impacts this other time track here so that Abram is maturing 54 years early relative to this time track but he's right at the edge of the deadline with respect to the 490 time track so you have two time tracks of different lengths operating with different persons interacting okay and therefore all these other time tracks are going to be governed by the same kinds of rules which of course we've already seen. The Lord has to be born here in 4103 from Adam, not here based on this other time track that's interacting with the blue, which is three years later, because there's a, this particular time track's deadline is three years prior. Okay? And that accounting between blue and green is going to keep on going. So we're going to see now how it impacts with his death. Okay, first of all, notice something. 4103 plus 40 is 4143. 4106 plus 40 is 4146. Now notice that. 4143 is 40 years after David's united kingship from his death. Okay? 4146, by contrast, is 1050 years from his Hebron kingship. 1050, not 1000. 1050. Your 1000 from his Hebron kingship is there. So God, the deadline that applies is not 1000 from David's Hebron kingship, but 1000 from his united kingship. Why? Because being king over only Hebron is not being king of Israel. Okay? And you would think, well, I'll just dispense with measuring this. No, you can't. Because this still applies. The relationship between Abraham and David being crowned at all. See, the world, the world's time track depends on Israel having God as her king. Okay, God as her king is going to be now born through David. So it's still relevant. Israel rejected God as king, but God didn't reject Israel. And God still wants to keep this promise to Abraham, who after all is the progenitor of Israel. So that time track, that contract, that separate accounting basis is still valid. This seems like it would have invalidated it for the world, and it, it could have 
except that Moses already had a time grant that was running. The Mosaic time grant runs out for the 490. Um, the Mosaic time grant runs out in 3156. I'm not sure it was the 490. I think it's the 1000. 3156. It's the 490. Moses' personal 490 ran out in 3156. So you see how that is something else that comes into play that affects the first temple's dedication. Why? Because it's based on a tie to Jacob. All right? This is kind of complicated, huh? So since Moses 490 year time grant is still running and it runs out when the temple's dedicated, then we got this time track to be concerned about too. So all these dates that follow after 4103 and 4106, all these dates that follow are designed to keep going, keep track of, well, is everything on time for all these different accounting bases? All right? So our first stop is what was allotted. Not what happened, but what was allotted. Christ was to be born and die 40 years, you know, based on the thousand anniversaries of David's kingship. The David's kingship start, a thousand years from David's kingship start, he had to be born. A thousand years from the end of David's kingship, which is, there are two different kinds of ends. That's the other thing complicating it. A thousand years from the end of it, all right, Christ would have to die. But there were two endings. Okay, the first ending was here. Okay, 10 years after this at Hebron, and then 10 years after this for United. 10 years after this for United is 4143. Okay, that's what based on his death. All right, but David lived seven years past his retirement. He retired at 70, unfortunately, because scholars are looking at Josephus rather than the Bible. They think he died at 70. Okay, well, a thousand years from his retirement at 70 is 4136. Because he was king over all Israel for 33 years, then he retired. Solomon took over, but David kept on living for another seven years, and there was a sort of semi-civil war going on during that last seven years with Adajana, and David himself wasn't quite supporting Solomon the way he should have, and you see that story in First Chronicles 22 and following. He was doing stuff with the temple, and you know he was basically sort of undercutting his son's authority because... He was saying that his son was young and inexperienced. So that gave Adajana and some others, um, their, in their minds, uh, justification to try to fight Solomon's rule. And that's the story that you see also told in 1 Kings 1. All right? So from here and here, there's only 33 years because David retired after having been king over all Israel, united, he retired at age 70. So that's a deadline issue also. But, and this is important, a thousand years after he dies, he would have been 40 years king over all Israel. It's just like a president. You know, a president might might you know go out of office but he had the office and he's still alive so you still call him president same thing is true of a king okay the father retires he passes the crown to his son he's king and his son's king even if his son isn't co-ruler but in fact just sole ruler that's what's happening here so david was king over all israel until his death to the tune of 40 years so Christ is allotted, based on two time tracks, okay, he's allotted to be king either, to live either 33 years, 
or 40 years? One of the two. Okay? Now, the difference between the two, because he's Messiah, is whether or not Israel accepts him. So if Israel had accepted him, he would have lived 40 years and died based on the 40-year deadline of David's death. And that schedule and that timeline is exactly how you derive the 62 weeks in Daniel. Okay? Now, the scholars don't know that because they're using lunar years. And they don't know that because they mistake when David died. So just think about that how, for a minute. You use the 62 weeks and you think that David died when he was 70. You, that extra seven years is, is going to seem like it's wrong to you. Because you think David died at 70. If you knew he died at 77, that extra seven years is going to make sense. If like a dispensationalist would or some other people you think he died at 70 and you see those extra seven years you're going to think either a they're wrong or b they're not solar because 490 lunar years is equal to 483 solar years so you're going to think you found a solution and you're not going to look any further you've just made a major math mistake and you don't even know and of course, what your other alert is the fact that there's this earlier deadline versus the blue timeline, which gives rise to 4 BC versus 1 AD. And that should have alerted you that there's an anomaly there, and everybody knows there's an anomaly there. But they don't do any checking as to why. They don't try to fix it. They just let it go because it's too complicated. And they rely on some dear doctor so-and-so or they bump the timeline up, you know, five years, three years, six years. You know, that's where you get all those different dates on the Internet. That's why you get them. And it's not just on the Internet. Scholarship has been bollocks over this for the better part of 2,000 years. And it's really kind of sad. It means nobody went back to the Bible and did his homework. And, I, 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 you know, I'm embarrassed to say that. And quite frankly, to be honest... Um, I was just as disinterested as everybody else in going back to the Bible and doing it de novo. But when my pastor kept coming up with the stuff that he came up with and I couldn't balance, because he was counting lunar years for Daniel 9 also. He was wrong in that. When I couldn't balance, and since this is what I do for a living, I went to God and I said, you know, hello, I can't make this balance. What's the right story here? And it took me a couple of years to do this. So you can empathize on the one hand with the fact that scholarship has been so slipshod for 2,000 years. On the other hand, it's like, you know what, after 2,000 years, why didn't somebody do this? But in their favor, you know, I didn't want to do this either. It bothers me every time I have to do these dates. I get very annoyed doing them, even though I do numbers for a living. So those are the two sides of the story. On the one hand, you can empathize with the bad scholarship that's gone on for 2,000 years. And on the other hand, there's no excuse. Both things are true at the same time. That's it. So back to the story. 4136 is 33 years after this. So it's okay. This is real important. It's okay if he dies early. The very nature of these timelines are deadlines. They're not fiats. Okay? It's okay to be early. It's not okay to be late. That's the point. We don't understand that. We think that these dates are fiats. So when we see dates in the Bible, we don't recognize what kind of character they are. We certainly don't know about the time grants. Okay? Even though we have verses like Colossians 4, 5 and Ephesians 5, 16, which talk about redeeming time. And even though we have Daniel 9, which talks about redeeming time, we don't realize that the dates in the Bible are in light of deadlines. Okay, there are factual dates, such and such happened in such and such year of the king. And then there are timelines that are based on deadlines. And we don't distinguish between the two. That's the source of all of our dating problems with the Bible. And as you can see, it's really sophisticated. God's keeping a very careful set of books. So based on that set of books, if Christ died 33 years after the thousandth anniversary of David's United Kingship, it would be okay 
because it's the thousandth anniversary of his retirement. You see that? Dying earlier than the thousandth year of his retirement is not right because it has the, the whole thousand has to be justified. But dying in the thousandth year of his retirement is okay. Because then the thousand is fulfilled. In other words, the thing that's real important here is that God promised that Christ will be born a thousand years after David. That Christ would die a thousand years after David. Okay, but there are multiple timelines for David. There's a thousand years based on the start of his kingship. There's a thousand years based on the end of his kingship. The end of his kingship is based on his retirement and his death. And not only that, but he's got two types of kingship. Hebron and United. So when God says a thousand years, and that's why at Solomon's accession in 1 Chronicles 22 through 29, there are a thousand bulls sacrificed. I think it was a thousand bulls. It's a thousand something. They make an issue about a thousand. This is why. The promise was a Messiah would be born and die based on a thousand years of David. So there's a time deadline, and it's a pretty narrow one. A thousand years after he retires, Christ could die. A thousand years after David's death, Christ could die. Because that would be 40 years he would have been king united over all Israel. So Christ has to have 40 year allotment. You see how this works? David was 40 years king, but there are two deadlines there also of 40 years. 40 years of king over both Hebron and all Israel or 40 years of king over all Israel based on his death you see that so these determine the boundaries of when the Lord can be born and die in order to fulfill the promise see that's a deadline too that's why these are subunits God made a promise to David in 2 Samuel 7 which is also in uh, 1 Chronicles 17. He made a promise. That's a time promise to David. That's what those sacrifices at Solomon's accession were about, to reference the promise. There were plays on the promise terms. Okay, so which of the 40s are you going to pick? The 40 that's here, or the 40 that's here, which basically would result in Christ being 33 when he dies. And then there's a third curveball. Since this was the deadline pre-David, and the idea, you know, kings are supposed to rule 40 years, that means that the, the full allotment of rule is there. Um, you've got an, another 40 years there. Okay, that applies. So the temple is founded based on that deadline. See, now look, 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 look how, this, how clever this is. 4106 is now tying back to that deadline. 4146 also ties back to the green deadline. David's Hebron kingship, 1050 from it, is 4146. So Solomon starts the temple in 3146. Okay? Because Christ is supposed to be born and the temple is supposed to be standing, Christ is the temple the temple depicts. Now my problem with this point part here is this is going to give rise to the change. Abram supermaturation 54 years before 2100. 54 year credit. But Solomon delayed starting the temple until 41, 3146. I don't know if I'm, you know, I've been doing this for so long it's easy for me but it might be hard on you. Let's go back here to the timeline which is more easy to recognize. David dies 3143. 
Solomon doesn't start the temple until three years later. The, the temple construction should have started then. God said to, to David, I'm not starting the temple while you're alive. That's in 2 Samuel 7, 1 Chronicles 17. But Solomon waits three years to start the temple's construction even. He should have started it here. If he started it here it took the same seven years, then the whole temple would have been done and could have been dedicated by 3100, which is what should have happened. I mean, not 3100, um, 3150. See? 40, 3143 plus 7 is 3150. That's how it should have, should have gone. If it went that way, and this is the important thing, if it went that way, then this deadline here would have stayed the same, a 54-year credit owed to the Gentiles. But it can't stay the same now. Because now all of a sudden we're late. The temple should have started in 3143 from Adam when David died, the very year he died. But it doesn't start until 3146 from Adam. Now, when you see all these timelines and realize that the Jews had to, you know, learn all this stuff at their mother's knee, it's pretty complicated, huh? All right, so here was the allotment based on the blue timeline. And the idea was the temple had to start when David died to align the blue and the green. To align all these timelines, the temple needed to start construction in 3143, the year David died. But it didn't. If it had started then, the credit owed to the Gentiles would be the same. But because the temple is now going back to this problem of Israel rejecting God as king, and because the temple's dedication is related to Jacob's birth, which is the birth of, of the Jews, this three-year delay <coughs> Excuse me. This three year delay, illustrated by their thousand year anniversaries, okay, is going to add three years, it's really three and a half, to this. No longer is it a 54 year credit. It's really 53.5 years there. Now we have to add another. 3.5 years because this is happening 3.5 years later than that. That's where you get 50 plus 7. Moses forecasted in the Mosaic Law and he actually builds it in. That's why that 56 is so pregnant in Moses, Isaiah, Daniel, Mary, and Paul. That's why Paul is using this for his date of writing. It's how did the 54-year credit for Abram turn into 57? It turned into 57 because there's a three-year delay between David's death and the start of temple construction. It wasn't supposed to be a three-year delay. If it had started in the right year, then all these time tracks would have converged. But they don't. So now... The credit owed to the Gentiles, actually it's not to the Gentiles, that extra three and a half years. The, the total time period now, we have a problem of reimbursing not just the 54 years here, but the three and 53.5, 53.5 years here, but the 53.5, the 3.5 years between these two. Then and only then will both time tracks be running at the same level but they don't run at the same level at the same time. So now look at that. We got a spread. And this also accounts for the variations in the Lord's birth. The Lord is born three years earlier here. He's born three years earlier because David died at age 77, and he has to be born in the thousandth anniversary of David's united kingship. That's the promise. Okay, at the same time, 
because there's a delay after David's death of three years. You got a spread effectively of seven years. Okay? So that effective spread of seven years is reflected in Daniel 9 to take into account the extra seven years that David lived and also to take into account the spread of seven years be because of the fact that he's now, um, the temple is being constructed three and a half years late. So here you go, three and a half years early born, three and a half years late, the timeline. So that's why, too, when people are looking at Bible dates, you'll see some estimates saying that the Lord was born 6 AD or 6 BC. Or they'll tack on six years to Exodus, setting it six years back. Because again, just like in the beginning, just like with Bishop Usher, you get the same kind of error. There's a six-year variance because you're looking at different Bible time tracks and you don't know how they interrelate. And everybody just kind of just goes all over the map. That's why you end up getting a six-year variance. Isn't that interesting? All because we don't know that God has rules for time, that there are deadlines for time, and they interact with promises God gave about how long from David's kingship until Messiah born, how long from David's kingship until Messiah dies. Okay? That's the problem. That's how come all these numbers are like this. Okay, so um, take a look at this for a few minutes or just put it on, you know, stop the uh, play. And I'm going to quit the video now and I'll come back, you know, later. I got to get some.